Okay, Bard Bart here, and my partner in Bardom, and what that is, stories and poetry telling. So we're, she was telling me a story earlier. Okay, Mo, can you kick it about the unionist, and what he said? He, he said that uh, it was the Irish people's forefathers that signed the treaty and approved the partition of Ireland. Right. Now, by unionist is meant someone who wants to remain in union. They are living in Northeast Ireland, and there are people in the South as well, too, and they want to remain in union with Britain, with the British Empire, okay? And what we were talking about, this is, when he said that, this is the reply that was given by Mo. Go ahead, Mo. Kick it now, kick it really loud. I said that I uh, guess then it was his forefather. Talk this way, talk this way, your voice is coming, you're talking against the wall. Sorry folks. We're, no, we're... I'm not, I'm talking out the door. There you go, right there, that's good. I said that it was his forefathers then that denied and ignored the democratic will of the people of the entire island of Ireland set down in the election in 1918 and been denied their freedom ever since. Well said. There you go. We got it out of you. All right. So the proclamation, we have the American Constitution, and that was definitely uh, what was inspiring the folks who wrote the Irish Proclamation, who did the very same thing as the Americans, in kicking out the British Empire. Nothing personal. Uh, it can all be lovely folks in your own land, but you sure can be dickhead motherfuckers and fickle bitches in somebody else's land. That's human, okay? That's all of us. I just see my shirt sparkling there, so this is probably not. We're learning on the job, folks, so just an adjustment in wardrobe right here. There we go. Anyway, so that's what's going on, and we have the uh, universal stories of oppressor oppressed and what is a legitimate just cause and illegitimate. So who are the terrorists and who are the heroes, all right? Because it all depends on which side of the aisle you're sitting. Now, if you are brought up in England, you're going to believe the uh, GE version of what happened between the uh, British and the Irish and really what the English and the Irish, okay? The role of it. So the GE version of what happens in world events, it's an American outfit, big brand corporation, and when it described what happened in America, it said that the Europeans settled on the East Coast first, and the Indians moved west. Now, there you go. Isn't that a lovely version of history? And wasn't it just lovely of those Native Americans, they were called Indians then, Native Americans to just pack up and go and say, all right, guys and gals, you're such lovely people. We're just going to pack up our shit where we've lived for, you know, hundreds of years, all of our homes, our families. You know, we're just going to give it all up for you lovely folks from across the water. Now, you know, and thanks for the rape, by the way, for your negative reinforcement of your ideas. You know, and for the murder. Okay, and for all the diseases you brought, and your private property. And the same story happened in Ireland. Okay, with the British Empire coming in, a culture destroyed. And what my partner was saying there is that the democratic will of the people. How do you know it was democratic? It was all of Ireland, 72% vote. Just about over two thirds of the people. Okay, where do you get a vote like that? And the will of the majority was ignored by the British Empire and the Constitution based, the Constitution didn't exist as such then. It was based on the proclamation with the principles of the proclamation, the same as what Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence. This was Ireland's Declaration of Independence, the Proclamation 1916. And the Constitution that came along afterwards, what's that story more about uh, De Valera and the Vatican? 
and the Constitution. Now kick it up now. No, for the story you told, you don't have to read it exactly. De, De Valera, what under him, the Constitution was what? And the Vatican. I don't want to say it wrong, so... Okay, she's not confident yet. Uh, the Constitution was sent to the Vatican twice. Okay, for ratification. Now, the, that was a complete denial of the principles of the proclamation. So there was corruption by De Valera and that government right there. Okay, so now, Mo, if you find where it said in there about the rights of the people, the civil rights of the people in the proclamation, because that's what we need to show in black and white. But, and click it when you get it, Mo. We're, I don't know what you mean by the civil rights of the people. It's, it's about the last, uh, second to last paragraph in the proclamation when it's talking about the rights of all the people of Ireland and the rights of the minority to be respected by the majority. It had that principle. Okay, okay. You got it. Now the kick Irish it. The Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally, and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government, which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. There we go. Proclamation 1916. The Easter Rising. Yeats wrote a poem about that. Okay? And now what we have, those are the principles being ignored, north and south. But slowly but surely, they're beginning to eke out. And that's what's happening here. And we're going on the record. And for any people to stand up like Americans did, and it happened in time, later with the Irish, they had been fighting like every country who was oppressed. The Native Americans picked up bows and arrows, that's all they had. They still stood up for their rights, and of course they were totally outnumbered. We know the story, the sad, sorry-assed story, okay? And there's a whole lot of wisdom that came out of some of those folks who were conquered that is so apropos for what is going on today for this culture. We're talking about rebuilding, restoring, and reclaiming America, including our language, not the king and queen's motherfucking English, which ignorant folks think is a civilized language of the refined, educated folks. Thank you. We'll pass. All right, now there's history straight. In strong language, no cursing, no swearing, okay, in a, a rhythm, of American language coming out of the people who were oppressed. Who's that? That's old Patty, Biddy, Nigger, Kike, Redskin, Wetback, Cooley, Wop. Wop, without papers, all of those groups. Well, we're the ones speaking, coming up with our poetry. And we're going to reclaim the university system that has been stolen from the children where you, couldn't, you can't go now unless you have so much power and so, so much wealth. We have a landlord, landlady, capitalistic, idolatrous, golden calf capitalism. We need enlightened capitalism, okay, for the general welfare of all. That is what the Irish fought for in 1916, and those guys were totally honorable. And they've got beautiful stories. And somebody, can ju you can just go on the internet, check it out, the proclamation of 1916. And there are folks over there fighting right now, Martin McGuinness and those folks who stood up in the IRA, atrocities on both sides, state collusion on the part of, well, the same as the South down here. It was a civil rights struggle. You had a minority who were being oppressed, a created minority when the country was divided by Britain. We'll tie it, tie it up now. 1921, there was a war of independence from 1918 to 1921 for the people to win the right of the people to have their Decisions, their democratic government recognized in Ireland and their British government refused to recognize it. And there is the ultimate hypocrisy and the cowardice 
Oh no, and the arrogance, the superciliousness of the supposed English gentleman. Destroying the culture still today and now doing the same thing through the American, but that's the human ego. We all got to face that. All right, but name it for what it is. To come along and say they were defending democracy while they were destroying it. It was 72% voting into the whole of Ireland. The Irish people didn't know what was good for themselves. And their will was denied. And then they're the bloody villains. That's how history gets rewritten and falsified. And the British government is going around doing it today. And they're in collusion with secret parts of the American government doing the same thing with the American empire. We have to dismantle empire. Go back to the Declaration of Independence. Go back to the Proclamation of Easter 1916, the same principles. And check out rights to all the people, rights of the minority. Not dividing the country by power, using terror. The British army were terrorists. And the British, using, they were the instrument of the empire. We'll take your ports. We won't give you your ports. We need your ports for our ships because we rule the seals. We have an empire to run for a monarchy, for the wealthy and the powerful. And you peons will just have to deal with it. Well, hell no. We stood up and we're standing up. We're never going to sit down again. We ain't stepping to the back of the bus. This is a human rights, civil rights movement around the world. And you damn plutocrats and all of us better get those, that landlord out, out of ourselves first and our landlady. Write your lordships and your ladyships. Here's a poem for you on the subject. Freedom. Being able to laugh at your own dumb ass. Okay, Christmas time. We were talking about prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S, and prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. People have the relationships wrong. Jesus, Mohammed, prophets. Do you think those guys would be fighting and killing each other and saying, yay, motherfucker, you know, I'm the one that's really one. No, I'm the one. Yeah, no, that's dumbass human shit. What did Christ preach? Love God, love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? The Good Samaritan. You do good. Good is a plan in the universe. And just for the evolutionists, the folks who are strictly say there's only a physical explanation, it's an atom, atomic explanation, subatomic particles, and we keep finding smaller ones, and when we can't find it, we're still looking to seek the God one. Or oh, we found that, chasing our tails, we think we're going to find it. Shelley the poet said, the relationship, and he was not a believer in religion, the relationship between the world and Adam, between the word and matter, between the word and the physical world. How do you explain that? How does the word come out of the physical world? Nobody can explain that. And anybody who goes around who thinks they can give a physical explanation for inspiration and divine madness is a fucking idiot. Them's facts. All right? One just passed down, Christopher Hickens. He was a savior to all the folks who had to be saved from the saviors, from prophets. Okay, that was a false prophet. But God rest his soul. But he was in for one hell of a shock. Whatever reality he's in right now, he's got to deal with his bullshit. We all got to. Journey your life. Okay? Ancient wisdom. Pulling out freedom for all the people, like it was said in that proclamation. Cherishing the freedom of all its children, regardless of differences. Love God, love good. That's open to all of us. And love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? The good Samaritan, the one who stopped to help. One on one, we deal with each other. We can be good neighbors or bad neighbors. And it's inside the two of us, but every day is a new day. So you get up and you try again today. Okay, we ain't batting a thousand. None of us are. All right, folks in the divine realm, that's fine. But for us mortals down here, if we're batting the three hundreds, we're doing mighty good. Okay, but most folks go around with a speck and beam mentality. Oh, so busy taking a speck out of somebody's eye they can't see because of the beam of their own. Count and misses instead of hits. Point six, six, six. Okay, now, so we got the connection. It was terror. Churchill and Lloyd George. And this is for Chris Matthews, who has a show here on MSNBC in the States. Okay, Chris, his background is similar to our Irish Catholic that stands in the state's Irish-American culture. But here is the difference, all right? Chris believes he comes from the British Isles. He knows his place, motherfucker. How are things in the colonies, Chris? 
That's how ignorant you are on the subject. And while we're on it, nah, we didn't have to vote for Gore against Bush. Okay, it's a democracy, and if people made a choice, and you think it was a bad choice, that is their right. But you were wrong. There were so many other factors contributing to Gore's defeat, including his own dumbass, first and foremost, he didn't win the state of Kentucky. But you picked just one factor, and you ran with your ignorance on that. But you did so, okay, I'm gonna get sidetracked on there. That would just kinda keep it uh, right there. But anyway, Churchill is one of Chris Matthews, Matthews' heroes. Churchill, when it comes to Ireland, was a damned terrorist. He and Lloyd George sat there and forced down the throat of a man who had stood up like the Americans over here and had their democratic rights and they were being denied. And what Churchill and Lloyd George said, we will put 100,000 more troops in there and they will terrorize the land and you won't have a bite to eat. And he calls him a hero. Churchill, yeah, in the Second World War, he came true for his people, but it wasn't for democracy. It was for the fucking British Empire. And the British Empire and Churchill were just as responsible for the First World War as the Germans. Like my partner says, she's got the inspiration when it goes. It was a squabble among royals. And that led to the Second World War. Churchill was a bloody arsonist fireman. That's what the Empire did. They started the bloody thing and then they had to get all those dumbass peasants to go out and kill each other. And that's how it came about. But for the record, a constitutionally democratic republic, constitution in the sense of the framework it hadn't emerged in Ireland yet, but the principles of the proclamation were there like the Declaration of Independence here. And the principles of freedom are the same everywhere. The civil rights for all people, regardless, including gay people, who's your neighbor? Mind your own fucking business and be good neighbors. Stop going around sticking your noses in other people's shit. That way your face won't be covered in it. Covered in it. Okay? So why don't we all try and do that regardless of class, color, creed, or background? But try and get our story straight so we can have a decent conversation. It's all about having a good, honest, open genuine conversation, like the beauty of those guys in Easter 1916 who went out there and stood up against the bloody British Empire, and like the guys that came along afterwards, like the hunger strikers. Okay, we're going to get back, we're going to finish this with a reading of uh, Yeats's Easter 1916 for those folks who will appreciate it, and then kick the hunger strike poem and the relationship between, but the people, to quote James Joyce from his portrait of the artist as a young man, he called them a handful of strangers. We allowed a handful of strangers to dominate us. Speaking of the Irish people. And he called that mentality and the people who had that mentality clout hoppers. Well, I've got other language for them. And you've heard it already. Same idea. So here we are kicking it. Poetry, stories. All right. Leave with a story. We'll pick that up later. Running out of steam right now. Bart Bart from BartBart.com. Out. And peace.